In 1945, the United States conducted the world's first nuclear test, codenamed Trinity. The explosion took place in New Mexico, at the Alamogorda test site. The test used an implosion-type plutonium bomb, which was attached to a steel tower. Before I start the video, I want to tell you that I opened a new channel Visioner History, with interesting and mystical facts. You will definitely not be bored. The link to the channel is placed in the description and in the pop-up menu. Go to it and subscribe. Here we go. The testers saw an incredibly bright flash, followed by a shock wave. The air at the epicenter of the explosion was so hot that it instantly melted the sand of the test site, turning it into glass. The high temperature of the explosion fused quartz and feldspar, turning it all into a light green mineral, later called trinitite. In subsequent nuclear explosions, a high-speed Rapitron camera designed by Harold Edgerton was used to photograph the explosions. Scientists wanted to see how the process of rapidly changing matter takes place within the first milliseconds. It was the Rapitron camera with its incredibly fast shutter, capable of opening for a microsecond, that allowed them to see the nucleation of a nuclear explosion. The resulting images were very surprising and puzzling to the testers. Looking at the photo taken a millisecond after detonation, they saw unusual glowing cone-like objects at the bottom of the fireball. During discussions, scientists could not agree on what caused the unusual appearance of the nuclear explosion in the first milliseconds. This question was addressed by a researcher who determined that the strange so-called spikes of the nuclear explosion were caused by the stretching cables that supported the test tower with the attached nuclear charge. During Operation Sniper at the Nevada nuclear test site, he determined that the cone-shaped objects originated from the supporting cables and ropes. The detonation of a nuclear charge produced a fireball that was brighter than the sun emitting enormous amounts of energy, its surface was heated to 60,000 degrees Celsius. In an instant, the cables supporting the tower were heated to a monstrous temperature, after which they vaporized. The glowing gas began to expand at high speed, turning into glowing spikes. John Malik found that if the cables were painted black, which absorbs radiation well, the cones would become brighter and larger. If you put reflective paint or a layer of aluminum on the cables, the formation of spikes on the glowing ball of a nuclear explosion might not happen at all. He called his discovery the rope trick effect. In addition to this phenomenon, the researchers were interested in the fact that after nuclear tests, very often the military had serious problems with communication. Scientists found out that during a nuclear explosion a powerful electromagnetic pulse is formed in the air ionized by radiation and light radiation, under the influence of strong currents. Despite the fact that it does not affect the human body in any way, for electrical appliances, power lines and electronic equipment, it has a devastating effect. In addition, it was found that after a nuclear explosion a huge number of ions are formed, which hinder the propagation of radio waves and disable radar stations. The strength of the electromagnetic pulse depends on the height of the nuclear explosion. If the explosion is detonated at an altitude below 4 kilometers, a relatively weak electromagnetic pulse appears. High-altitude nuclear explosions at 30 kilometers and higher produce a powerful pulse. Scientists have figured out the nature of this phenomenon. From the center of a nuclear explosion spreads penetrating radiation, which passes through extended, conductive objects. Then a rapidly changing current pulse is generated, creating a field, which is radiated at the speed of light into the surrounding space. The electromagnetic pulse causes voltages outside shielded long conductors, which in turn causes insulation breakdowns and breakdowns of devices that are connected to cable networks. A high-altitude nuclear explosion can disable radio equipment and electrical apparatus at distances of up to several tens of kilometers from the epicenter. Another observation of the researchers was the appearance of rain or hail after a nuclear explosion. They found that the air heated by the explosion rises upward, where it begins to swirl into a ring-like vortex and pulls behind it a so-called leg of dust and smoke. After some time the edges of the ring vortex cool down and become like a cumulonimbus cloud. Due to condensation of water vapor, radioactive dust particles on which water vapor settles become nuclei of condensation. 
rising higher, the cloud cools, after which the water vapor from the radioactive particles turns into water droplets and falls to the ground in the form of heavy radioactive rain, hail, or even snow. Similar fallout from a nuclear mushroom cloud exposes the area to radioactive contamination. All of these tests helped the nuclear industry develop, and by the late 1950s, unusual compact nuclear charges had begun to appear. For example, one of the smallest nuclear weapons, the Davy Crockett, was developed. It was a nuclear round that was delivered to the target with a recoilless gun. The weapon was intended to be used in the event of a Soviet offensive in West Germany or on the Korean Peninsula. The miniature atomic charge consisted of a head fairing, a casing and four stabilizers. The charge casing had a two-position switch with two marks for setting the detonation height of the item. The 120 mm cannon could be fired at distances of up to 2 km and up to 4 km with the 150 mm cannon. The weapon was operated by three servicemen and could be mounted on a jeep or a caterpillar vehicle. In order for the military to be safe from the effects of a nuclear explosion, they had to be at least 800 meters away from the epicenter. A shorter distance from the point of detonation to the gun threatened to be affected by ionizing radiation. In the early 60s the Davy Crockett was tested at the test site, after which 2,100 atomic charges were produced and remained in service for about 20 years. Fearing mutual annihilation, the Soviet Union and the United States launched the so-called détente process by signing treaties limiting the growth of nuclear arsenals. The fact is that even after the treaties were signed, the nuclear stockpiles of the two countries continued to grow. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.